When you're eating your favorite cheesy burger, have you ever wondered what happens to it in your body or how do you get the energy from the burger? Hello everyone, welcome to Calcium Bidi. In this metabolism series, we're gonna know part by part what happens to the burger in your body. In the burger, the cheese is the lipid portion. Today, we're gonna know what happens to the cheese in your body. That means how lipids are digested and absorbed. If you wanna be a part of the exciting adventure of the cheese in your body, stay with us till the end. Any kind of lipid we ingest, suppose cheese, it contains more than 90% of triacylglycerol and partly free cholesterol, cholesterol ester, phospholipid and a bit of free fatty acid. At first, they will be digested in your gastrointestinal system. Digestion means breaking down of large food particles to smaller absorbable ones so that they can easily be absorbed in your blood or limb. In, this is your digestive system. Let's see what happens to the lipid after ingestion. Lipid digestion begins in the stomach with the help of two enzymes, lingual lipase and gastric lipase. Lipase is the enzyme which breaks down the lipid. The gastric lipase from stomach and the lingual lipase from saliva together acts on triacylglycerol and breaks it down into glycerol and fatty acid. But they can't act effectively because the extreme acidic pH of stomach don't let them to work properly. So they mostly act on the triacylglycerol of short chain fatty acid. This little amount of digestion plays a great role in the patient of pancreatic insufficiency where pancreas can't produce pancreatic lipase. From the stomach, the unchanged portion will enter into the duodenum. In the duodenum, there is a unique process of fat digestion. This process is called emulsification. Emulsification means dispersion of lipids into smaller fat droplets due to reduction in the surface tension. Fat particles are so large that enzymes can't effectively work on them. So by emulsification, large fat globules are broken down into smaller particles which increase their surface area so that enzymes can effectively work on them. The emulsification of fat is done in two processes. These are by reduction of surface tension by bile salts and lecithin and by peristaltic movement of the small intestine. Now that they are emulsified, enzymes can effectively work on them. Pancreas secretes enzymes produced by it through the common bile duct into the duodenum. Pancreatic lipase breaks down the triacylglycerol with the help of colipase. Triacylglycerol <coughs> removes fatty acid from first and third carbon of triacylglycerol and produces two monoacylglycerol. Two monoacylglycerol can be further broken down but some of the true monoacylglycerol are isomerized into one monoacylglycerol on which pancreatic lipase further works and breaks it down into fatty acid and glycerol. So the end product of triacylglycerol are fatty acid, two monoacylglycerol and glycerol. That was the triacylglycerol portion of the cheese. There are some other parts of cholesterol, cholesterol ester and phospholipid. You might wonder what is the difference between cholesterol ester and free cholesterol. Always remember cholesterol ester is a simple lipid but cholesterol is a derived lipid which is produced by hydrolysis of cholesterol ester. In our body both cholesterol ester and free cholesterol are present and they together constitute the total cholesterol. Most of the dietary cholesterol are in the free form. The rest of the col dietary cholesterol, which are in cholesterol ester form, will convert into cholesterol and fatty acid by the enzyme cholesterol esterase. The phospholipid portion will convert into lysophospholipid and fatty acid. Phospholipase A2 enzyme helps in this regard and their activity is enhanced by basalt. So at the end of digestion, this little cheese is converted into fatty acid, glycerol, 2 monoacylglycerol, cholesterol and lysophospholipid. These are converted to such so that they can be easily absorbed. All the end products are amphipathic lipids. That means they have both hydrophilic and hydrophobic ends. 
So, the products of lipid digestion are in your intestine, ready to be absorbed. But how will they pass the barrier? The short-chain fatty acid and glycerol are small molecules, so they are directly absorbed in the blood. But the long-chain fatty acid, cholesterol, 2 monoacylglycerol, and lysophospholipids are large molecules, so they can't cross the intestinal epithelial cell. So, to help them to cross the barrier, the bile salts come to play. Bile salt interacts with the product of fat digestion and they form a globular water soluble molecular aggregate known as micelle. Micelle is water soluble because it has hydrophilic part to the exterior and hydrophobic part to the interior. As, as it has become water soluble, it can easily cross the water layer of intestinal mucosa and they reach the brush border of mucosal cell. Then they are absorbed in the entire site by simple diffusion. After helping them to transport through the intestinal epithelium, bile salts come back to the lumen and again forms micelle with the products of lipid digestion to help them pass through the intestinal epithelium. This action of the bile salt is known as the fairing action of bile salt in absorption of lipids. Now they are in the entire site, they will turn back to their original cell. Two monoacylglycerol will be added with fatty acid to form triacylglycerol, lysophospholipid will be reacylated to phospholipid, and cholesterol will go back to cholesterol ester. You may wonder why did they convert in the first place? Actually, they were converted so that they can pass through the intestinal lumen. But those forms are non-functional in our body, so they have to turn into their original active form. But now that they have turned into their original self, they are so large molecules that they can't be absorbed in the capillaries to enter into the blood. Now what will they do? To help them to in this trouble, lifesaver apoprotein, ApoB48, which is synthesized by the enterocyte, comes into action. ApoB48 will package triacylglycerol, cholesterol, ester, cholesterol and phospholipid and will form a globular chylomicron. From the enterocyte, chylomicron is secreted to the lymphatics by exocytosis. After traveling through the lymphatic system, they enter into the left subclavian vein by thoracic duct and right subclavian vein by right lymphatic duct. Finally, the end product of fat digestion has reached the blood. This constitute the plasmolipids, which are free fatty acid 6 to 16 mg percent, triacylglycerol 75 to 150 mg percent, phospholipid. 150 to 200 mg percent and total cholesterol 150 to 220 mg percent. So this is how your favorite cheese is digested and absorbed and finally reaches in your blood. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please share with your friends and please subscribe our channel. Thanks a lot.